Well, welcome to Living Life. Today is Sunday, November 25th, which means it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and then one week before we have Advent, when we get to enter into a season, when we get to celebrate the birth, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we're going to be focusing in on 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the opening verses, and we're going to see that we're called to unite in prayer because we have this king, Jehoshaphat, and he's been given some very terrible news that there are people coming to have battle with his people, and there's just not too many people for him to go out in battle, and so he calls the people to pray, actually to fast and to pray. And I just love, there's this verse in Psalm 50, verse 15, where God says, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will honor me. Well, we're going to see how that actually plays out in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And so let's have our Bibles open and let's hear today's passage. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 through 13. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Mayunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is, En Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So we have here King Jehoshaphat hearing some bad news that there is a battle upon them. And so he calls his people to pray. So the people there in Judah, in Jerusalem area, the southern kingdom, he's going to have them fast. In fact, we read about that in verse 3. It says, alarmed. Well, yeah, because he just heard this horrible news. It says, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. And so fasting, we know that's, I like the way it's described as feasting on God. Fasting is feasting on God while we abstain from food and or other things. Now, when it comes to fasting, we know that it's a way that can strengthen our communion and our communication with God. And it's a way to focus our attention, focus our prayer, because 
we're going to be talking to God about matters that matter to both of us. But fasting, sometimes people can think that it's kind of magical and that it, it just will produce whatever it is that we want. Or they think that it's meritorious, like God will owe us something or we can earn and merit God's favor. Well, we know that that is simply not true. I mean, we operate off of God's grace and grace is God acting in our lives to bring about what we don't deserve and cannot accomplish on our own. And so King Jehoshaphat calls the people though to fast and to pray. And it's interesting in our text today that we have the prayer that Jehoshaphat gave, and it's seven verses in length. So I'm not going to read that all for us right now. You can certainly read it on your own. But in verse 6, he begins the prayer by saying, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. And then he just goes on to just pour out his heart. He's praying earnestly, honestly, sincerely, reverently, and he just calls upon the Lord in this day of trouble, trusting that God will rescue them, and then the people will bring honor to the Lord. Now he ends his prayer in verse 12, he says, We have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And as I read those last verses, I just, it's like this is where we find ourselves. I have a feeling that I'm speaking to people who you could say, I don't know what to do. There's something that's upon you, a decision that you have to make. There is a battle that you must encounter. There's a struggle that has come upon you. And you don't know what to do, but you pray like King Jehoshaphat where he says, but our eyes are on you. You see, we want to stay connected when it comes to to our life with the Lord, and we're to call upon the name of the Lord. And I just want to encourage you today, as you go about the things that you're doing, that you would pay attention to the Lord, that you would, if you feel called, that you would fast, and that you would pray, and you would really turn to the Lord and know that He just loves you with an everlasting love. And so in verse 13, for our text ending today, it says that all the men of Judah with their wives and children, the little ones, stood there before the Lord. They stood there, they waited upon the Lord. And I want to encourage you, and I encourage myself and my, my family, let's be people of prayer. And we know that God will bring an answer. We know that He can answer in various ways. God might simply say to you when you pray to Him, He's going to say, yes, and He's going to give you what, you what you ask for. But He might say, no. And if He does so, that's out of His grace He's doing that. But of course, he can also answer our prayers with wait. Let's just wait. Now, that's a hard one to be in the waiting room while God is at work. But of course, I, I think actually the answer that God gives most often to our prayers, along with wait, is then he says, here's something even better. And we're going to see that as we go through 2 Chronicles chapter 20, that God really comes through with something even better 
than the people could imagine and what they prayed for. So I want to encourage you, be a person of prayer and do so to God's glory and your joy. So as we close our time today, and we've been thinking about being united in prayer, and we know that Jehoshaphat called for the people to fast, you might be having a few questions in regards to fasting. And, you know, fasting, we can, as we abstain from food or some other thing, that it can be different lengths of time. Maybe you're just going to fast for one meal, or maybe you would fast for a whole day. Or it could be an extended fast, all the way up to, say, 40 days of a fast. And then there's different intensity to a fast. You can fast from just one food item or for a, a whole meal. I know for myself that there's times when I will fast from caffeine or potato chips or soda, some things that help me to just draw my attention back to God, because that's what fasting is, is we want to feast on God. Well, let me pray for you at this time. Father, I do want to just lift up those who are hearing this today, that Father, as they are going about various issues in their own lives, that they would desire to stay connected to you, that Father, they would call upon you in this day of trouble. And Father, may you rescue them, and then may they honor you. Father, we want nothing more than to just bring praise to you and to lift up your holy name. We thank you for the way that we can see throughout holy history that you are a God who hears our prayers. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. 이 프로그램은 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 